and I really believe that science is one of the most fascinating um, subjects out there. Obviously, I'm a little biased, but if they, people would actually realize how it incorporates into their everyday lives, it would make a lot more sense, and kids, especially young teenagers, would be more fascinated in learning more about it rather than, um, you know, oh, I just have to memorize random facts about whales and DNA and, and animal kingdoms and so forth. And education to me doesn't have any limitations, you know, it's learning. You can learn as much as you want. How you want to live your life, that's where you set your own limitations. But you should be able to gain access to as much knowledge as you want. Actually, I wasn't interested in science at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I was in high school, I wanted to be a journalist. And I applied um, to Michigan State. Now, all my friends, mind you, uh, went to Boston or California or D.C., uh, and um, they were all like, come on, let's go, you know, let's go there. I'm like, no, I want the real college experience. So I was looking around at the schools. There was UC Riverside I was interested in because I felt Riverside was outside of Los Angeles enough. Uh, I was interested in University of Maryland College Park very much. I actually was going to go there if I didn't get accepted to Michigan State. And then there was Michigan State, and I was like, where is this? You know, oh, East Lansing, Michigan. I'm like... Where's Michigan? You know, I mean, yeah, you know the total geography. They're like, oh, it's near a lake. Oh, okay, that might be good. And no one told me the weather was what the weather was like in Michigan, right? No one I ever failed to mention that. I'm a girl from the desert. You can imagine. And so I actually applied to Michigan State, and I said, you know, let me see what I get. You know, let me see if this place is good enough to go. So when I applied, my parents were like, well, one of the only ways we're going to let you go to the United States is if you study science, law, or medicine, you know. And I was telling my parents, I'm like, well, I don't like any of those choices. I want to study journalism. And my, my mom was like, well, if you're going to study journalism, you can stay right here in Kuwait and go to the school here. And I was like, Kuwait? Nah, -uh, I got to go. <laughs> so I what about, what if, what if I put undecided? Because there was this little box that said undecided, you know, hoping that that would please them enough, let them, let the application go through, and then I'll just switch to communications once I got to the States. Uh -huh. And I was like, okay, yeah, you, you put undecided. So I put undecided. And I thought, you know, gave my application to my mother, she sent it off, and then I get this letter from the College of Natural Sciences at, at MSU saying, well, you know, congratulations, you've been accepted, we look forward to seeing you in the fall, blah, 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 as a chemistry major. I'm like, wow, I did not even apply for anything. Well, my mother had gone and changed my undecided <laughs> to chemistry and then sent it off. And you know what her excuse was? When I told her, I was like, Mom, look, I got accepted to chemistry because I hadn't put two and two together. She's like, oh my God, you must have been so smart that they thought you were definitely made to be a chemist. I, I was, and then it hit me. I'm like, do you think I'm stupid? And she starts laughing. But anyway, she was like, well, you're going to go to chemistry. You know, you have to go. And I said, fine, you know. And I was so disappointed. I remember my first year because I hated general chemistry at school, in high school. And I ended up teaching it now. It's amazing how much I hated it then and then you're stuck doing something and you love it now. In high school you just try to get through the classes. In college and undergrad, again the first couple of years you just get through the class and try to get through the classes, but then you start to really learn and understand your major. And I was really fascinated. I did research one summer in my junior year and I did research my senior year too. And I was really, really fascinated by just how you can you know apply science to just the body you know that's why I became a biochemist you know how does the body work you know how intricate cells work how intricate cells are and how you know little proteins can make such a big difference you know how some diseases are just caused by one change in a protein it was just it blew my mind I think pictures are very important pictures video and definitely experiments. We didn't have the opportunity to do experiments, but when I talk to a lot of high schoolers nowadays, apparently they're trying to do more experiments in their classes. And so when they actually can see what is happening, when you mix, you know, carbon dioxide with something else and you get this reaction to occur and you see this gas forming and so forth, then they can actually take that chemical reaction that you're writing on the board and relate to it. And I think the most important thing is to show students how chemistry actually works. You know, so do an experiment. If you're talking about titrations, for example, and you're saying, you know, once the acid and the base are at the same molar concentration, you're going to get a color change. Well, actually do it. You know, do it with them or have them do it. Once they see that color change, and they're like, ah, okay, this makes sense. You know, some students, and this is myself included, and maybe yourself included as well, just do not like memorizing facts. You know, 
And then problem solving. You know, I feel that I never learned in high school how to solve a problem. It was more, let me memorize this equation and plug numbers in. And what I try to do, especially at Georgia Tech here, and you can ask my students this, is just teach them how to think about a problem. And most of the time, what I'll, the problems that I give them will have too much information, and they'll, and you'll see right away, the minute I give them the problem, they'll start writing down the equations that we had just learned in lecture, and trying their way to find, you know, plug in the numbers and see if they can get a number based off of these equations. But I always tell them, think, what's given to you, what's asked of you. Sometimes. It's just simple multiplication. Sometimes it's actually using an equation. And I never learned how to critically think. I learned how to memorize and plug in numbers. I never learned how to think. So I think it's very important that, especially with a course like chemistry, that you use visual descriptions and you also teach them how to solve problems. You know, how to read what the question is asking, gather the information that you need to solve the problem rather than just memorize this, you know, memorize this equation, plug it in, you know. And if you talk to a lot of the freshmen here at Georgia Tech, the one thing they'll tell you is that they were very spoon-fed. You know, they were given the equation and told that whenever you're asked this type of question, this is the equation you need to use and so forth. That's wrong. You know, you need to be able to teach your students how to think. Um, because believe me, there are a number of them that come as freshmen here that hate science. And they've already had in their minds that they are just not good scientists. And I keep telling them that's not true. Everyone's a good scientist. Just try to learn, try to see what you're learning, try to apply it to your life, you know, appreciate it. And, and some do, and some really just don't like it, and that's okay too.